Welcome everybody. Welcome to the last edition of the 2021 ICANA webinar series for English language teachers. During uh, today's presentation, uh, we will be talking about authentic materials and how to use them to best fit our course objectives. I'm very pleased today to be presenting with my colleagues, Andrea Arfini and Nilia Monte. So, during today's webinar, we will be talking about authentic materials, uh, the types of authentic materials that we can use in our classes, also about uh, the, type of, the type of activities that we can use to exploit those authentic materials. Then we will discuss uh, if there is uh, a best time to introduce authentic materials in our classes or uh, a perfect level where to introduce uh, uh, authentic materials. And finally, we will all together uh, reflect upon the relevance of using authentic materials in the language class. So uh, before we start talking about authentic materials, we think it is important to, uh, to, to decide if we are all on the same, uh, on the same page, okay? If we all uh, consider the same definitions of authentic materials. So here on the slide, you can see three definitions of materials. Uh, in a few moments, we will have a poll. So please, we ask you to read the three definitions silently and choose the two that you think refer to what authentic materials are. Are you ready? So let's have the poll. Can you see the poll? Yes. Okay, take, yes. take a minute to vote, please. Thank you. Good. <laughs> We are getting many votes. That's great. Thank you. Thank you for participating. Okay. Good. So we have several votes. Let's share the results. So uh, as you see, most of, most of you have chosen uh, <clears throat> definitions A and B, and only a few have chosen definition C, right? So let me tell you, I'm going to stop the sharing the results now. Let me tell you that the first uh, two definitions uh, are definitions uh, stated by well-known authors, uh, and they refer to authentic materials. While the last definition is about instructional materials or materials that are specifically designed for English language teaching. So now that we, we all know what authentic materials are, uh, let's have another poll, a second poll, uh, to see if you use authentic materials in your classes or if you don't, okay? Please, can you type in your chat the answer, either yes or no? Thank you very much. Good, so I see that most of you uh, use authentic materials in your classes. And that is certainly great. Wonderful. All right, so let's move on to the following activity. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. So instead of saying why you don't use authentic materials, let's concentrate on why you use authentic materials. So take a, a minute to think of one word or two at the most words that you would um, use to define why. Uh, why is it that you use authentic materials in your classes? Think of that, type it in your chat, but don't send it. Uh, send those words until I tell you to do so, please. Okay. Are you ready? Are you? Okay, so one, two, three, go. <laughs> wow, look at that cascade. I love it. So they are real, interesting, engaging to check grammar points, real context. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you very much again for participating. So let's move on now. And have some, uh, have a, um, to, to have an activity uh, where you will have a chance to tell us about what type uh, of authentic materials you use. Mm -hmm. So this time you can scan uh, the QR code that you see on the slide, or you can go to menti.com. I'm sorry. I paste the link in the chat, Grace. Yes, for you, you pasted for the all, link. Everybody. In... Yes. There and it can is. You, can you go what? back afterwards to, to the key code? I was about to. Uh, it's there. Hi. I shared it. Yes, it's there. Thank you, Nilia. So uh, you have, you can enter by scanning the QR code, as I told you before, or by going to menti.com and typing in the number, the code uh, that appears on top of the screen. Okay, and start uh, writing, okay, what authentic materials you have recently used in your classes. You're welcome. Oh, look at that. That's great. So we have movies, TED Talks, books, news articles, newspaper articles, videos, video, photographs, memes, lots of newspapers, series, oh, I love that. <laughs> I'm a big series fan. Sitcoms, great, wonderful. So um, uh, as I was saying uh, in the Mentimeter Cloud, we could see lots of authentic materials that we can use in our classes, right? And uh, those of authentic materials can be classified into two types. Uh, according to the purpose for which they were created into instructional or authentic, and according to the, their format into paper-based or printed materials, Audio, audiovisual materials that combine uh, audio and, and uh, image, and then electronic materials that were specifically designed for, uh, for electronic apps or for the internet. Mm -hmm. So now that we have uh, talked uh, briefly about the types of uh, authentic materials that we use in our classes, and that we have also gone very quickly through a classification of authentic materials, now it's uh, the time to maybe play a game and see if you can spot the odd one out in each of the categories in the game, all right? So, you will have different categories, and in each category, there is one item that does not belong. So you have to check that one, okay? So 
Um, Andrea will be sharing the Word World link in the chat. Or there it can, is. Yes, or you can scan the QR code. Okay, get ready. And when you finish, you can include your name in the leaderboard. Remember, you get points for correct answers and also for speed. Are you there? So you have to tap each uh, card to open it. Okay, so you tap one to open it. Don't forget to write your name on the leaderboard when you finish the game. Good. <laughs> I hope I'll be able to show the leaderboard. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. Okay, so. Okay, look at that. Wow. Wow, good for Gabby, Leon, and Danny. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you again for participating. All right, so. Okay, so now Nilia will go deeper into the classification of authentic materials according to format. Thank you, okay. Andrea. I, I, I will, Andrea. I will. Andrea, sorry, Andrea. I'm sorry. Okay, no, no problem, no problem. We are okay. yeah, there we go. the three of us, yeah. Okay, um, as Graciela said, yeah, we can classify authentic materials according to format. Yeah, we have paper-based material, such as recipes, articles, train time tables, ads, brochures, maps, yeah? instructions for use of equipment. Just to mention a few. We can also have audiovisual authentic materials, such as TV commercials, films, video clips, weather forecasts, uh, airport and uh, train station announcements, radio talks, songs, and debates. And we can also have electronic authentic materials such as websites, video games, or apps for cell phones and, tab and tablets, sorry, ebooks, blogs, social media posts, etc. 
right? Okay, I will be working yeah, with the first yeah, format, paper-based authentic materials, and I will work on some examples. Then Nilia will focus on audio audiovisual materials, specifically songs. And then Grace will show examples of compila um, compilations yeah, of authentic um, audiovisual and electronic materials. Yeah? Okay, so let's get started with paper-based authentic materials. Um, authentic materials yeah, um, in the paper-based format can be, for example, restaurant menus, recipes, food labels, newspaper or magazine articles, ads, coupons, sales catalogs, price tags, travel brochures, maps, bus and train schedules, signs we can find on the street, at the airport, movie posters, product descriptions, and instruction manuals for use of equipment. So this yeah, is a long list of materials, right? These materials can supplement an existing curriculum or textbook, or can even serve as the basis for an entire course, right? For instance, perhaps in a textbook, there is a unit on uh, places in a city, right? With dialogues and exercises for students to complete. However, we can use leaflets, brochures, maps in English to have students apply what they have learned about these topics, right? Uh, before working with a map, a good uh, idea could be to use a warm-up activity, for example, a thinking map. What is that? Well, we can have students get into groups, explain to them that they will soon examine a map, for example, of New York City, yeah, and have them reflect and think carefully about what they may already know about that place. For example, where the city is, yeah, famous places they have heard of or they have visited if they have traveled. Yeah. And if they would like to go there, right? And we can write the name of the city, for example, in, on a piece of paper or on the board and write all the words to create this web or map. Mm. That way, yeah, uh, we, um, in a way, yeah, we uh, take advantage of the prior knowledge, the background knowledge they have. Yes. Okay. Once yeah, these maps are yeah finished, we can hand out some printed maps. Okay, of New York City, and ask them to find those places. Yeah on the map and say where they are, right? But let's imagine that we are still, yeah, giving online classes, right? And how can we adapt this activity? Well, for example, yeah, here on this slide, we can see an H5P activity yeah, called multiple hotspots, find multiple hotspots. And uh, on the activity, yeah, there is a map, a part of a map of New York City. And the task for students is to find seven places yeah, on this map. For example, two libraries, four museums, and a post office. How can they mark those places, those, those hotspots, by clicking on the map? Yeah? On the next slide, we can see that the hotspots have been marked. Yeah, you see the, those red circles yeah, on the map. And yeah, the task has been completed, right? OK. Um, now, once the students yeah, get familiar with the map, we can have them uh, get in, we can ask them to get in pairs 
and work on a role play situation. Let's go to the next slide, Grace, to show just one example of a role play situation yeah, in which students will play the roles of tourists, yeah, student A, and a citizen of New York City, student B, and they will put into practice asking for and giving directions using that same map, yeah? Okay, but well, we mentioned that there are lots of paper-based authentic materials. Let's go to the next slide. And here we see lots of ads, people, right? We can find ads everywhere in leaflets, in brochures, in travel guides, in newspapers, in magazines. Here you can see, uh, show different kinds of events, right? As a warm up activity, we can ask students to think about the type of events they like, yeah? And then reflect on the important information we need to know if we want to go to those events, right? Then we can show yeah, students some ads and work with the visual yeah, elements in them. For example, photos, drawings, charts, etc. Yeah? With all the background knowledge yeah, uh, uh, that has been activated, mm, we can create a word cloud with all those words, right? Okay, of course, there are lots of free generators for word clouds, such as Mentimeter, yeah, wordle.net, um, or wordclouds.com. Yeah, they are free to use, right? Okay, but how about, yeah, working together? Let, now it's your turn to practice, people. So we're going to go to a link that I will post in, in the chat box in a sec, and we will work on some ads. You can also scan the QR code you have on this slide, or just click on the link I will post in a second. Yeah, okay, here I have it. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so on this uh, H5P activity, yeah, we are going to focus on events in the Big Apple. So we click on read and you will find three ads of events in New York City. Yeah, you will choose the right choice Mm -hmm. And you will see if you got it right. Grace, would you like to try the first one? Good job. And you see that you have several questions for each of the ads. Okay, I hope yeah, you enjoyed this activity, right? 
Okay, um, let's move to the next slide. Thank you, Grace. We also said that um, another kind of yeah, paper-based authentic material is menus, recipes, food labels, right? Okay, we know that food is important to everyone. Mm -hmm. Students want to learn yeah, to order meals with confidence, yeah, especially when they travel. So it's a good idea yeah, to have students learn some of the common dishes yeah, in English speaking countries. And the best way to do that is to use authentic printed menus, right? Now, we can get printed menus when we travel. Mm -hmm. Or when students travel, we can ask them to bring some menus yeah, for us to use. Mm -hmm. But we can also find lots, lots of restaurant menus online. Yeah? Some restaurants have their online yeah, menus yeah, uploaded, so we can easily download them, right? But we all know mm, that sometimes students find it difficult to read menus, mm? either because the name of the dishes are new to them or the vocabulary, the ingredients, the cooking terms are too complex for them, right? No matter, I, I, I guess there's somebody, uh, okay, never mind. So um, no matter how proficient yeah, students might be, they usually find it difficult to understand this type of materials, right? So, so as to tackle this difficulty, yeah, we can use menus yeah, for a reading comprehension activity first. Mm -hmm. We can give uh, students mm, a printed menu and ask them to scan yeah, the menu so as to find specific facts. Okay, would you like to try? Yeah, let's go to the link yeah, that I will post in the chat box. Remember that you can also scan the QR code and I'm sure, I bet you, re you will really get hungry yeah, after reading this menu. Mm, let me post it. Okay, let me see. There it is. Okay. So it's a pizza hat, yeah. Activity with a pizza hat menu. We're going to go and have dinner. Mm. Look. Wow. Lots of delicious things, yeah. And you can go through these different activities, yeah, by scrolling down and choose the right options, yeah. We can focus on the different sections of this menu. And by scrolling up and down, yeah, you can go through the questions and look at the full menu for your answers. Okay. I guess, yeah, you enjoyed this activity. But wait, you have to have dinner later, right? Okay, now, of course, another activity we usually do with menus is role play situations at a restaurant or yeah, um, 
at a pub, yeah? But another activity we can use, okay, to practice speaking could be to set up um, restaurant stations in the classroom, yeah? Uh, how do we do that? We divide the group, uh, the class in two groups. One group will be the waiters or restaurant people, and the other group will be the customers. Uh, the restaurant people, the waiters, will have different stations mm, where they will offer different things. For example, appetizers, main courses, desserts, beverages. And the customers, yeah, the other group of students, will move from station to station ordering food, drinks, and writing down the prices because at the end, they will have to pay the check. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are just a few activities we can do with menus. But to round up, remember that when we choose printed authentic materials for our classes, it's crucial, it's essential to select them yeah, carefully, taking into account yeah, the language proficiency level of our students, the language yeah, structure and vocabulary students will practice, how these resources <laughs> will help them learn and practice, yeah? then what topics are interesting to our students, and the variety of different types of materials we can use to motivate students to use English as much as possible, right? Okay, now, as uh, we said before, yeah, there are other formats, yeah? The audiovisual format, for example, TV commercials, films, video clips, songs, debates, yeah, is our next step. Now, uh, Nilia will focus on songs. So Nilia, the floor is yours. Thank you, Andre. I feel like in a TV show. <laughs> okay, Grace, if you can move on to the next slide, thank you. Um, we'll see here that, well, songs provide, you know, great samples of language and they feel very authentic because on the other hand, they help us bond with our students. Um, you know, you can choose your, the song yourself or you can ask your students to tell you, um, musicians, of course in English, right? Um, musicians or singers or specific songs they would like to do in class. And that, trust me, creates a great bond and it teaches you about music. You keep updated on the new trends, learning from your students. Um, as you, as we saw here, so be on the look, as it said in the previous uh, slide, be on the look or on the, on the here, we would say, for lyrics and pay attention to the lyrics of songs because they provide great, great samples of language. You can use songs uh, for different purposes. As I said, uh, as I just said, you can use them to bond with your students by choosing the ones they like. What I usually do at the beginning of a course, especially when I work with teenagers, is to ask them for singers, songs um, they would like to tackle in class. And uh, along the course, I try to, to, to cover most or all, if possible, the songs they have chosen. Of course, you have to tell them in some cases, a word of caution here. Um, you have to tell them in some cases, like nowadays, trap and rap are all the trend, you know, all the rage. And sometimes lyrics are not appropriate for classroom use. So you have to let them know that you will do your own research and see which one is appropriate to do in, in class. But you will find one uh, that, that might serve your purposes. Um, another um, aim or goal you can use songs for is to provide students with meaningful, authentic language input. And again, it feels very real. Uh, it also taps into emotions. Songs are very good to do, for example, at the end of a class, you know, the last 10 minutes, 15 minutes, have them time to relax, 
you know, and keep on paying attention, ask, ask them to sing along if they want. Even if you work online, they just, you know, turn off the microphone and sing along, no one's listening. It's a great source of phonetics uh, practice. Also, you can use songs to talk about a theme or a topic you're interested in, that is choose your songs, not just because of what your students like or because of some grammar or vocabulary you're tackling, but also in connection to the theme you're working on or to a conversation area you would like to tackle. So if we move on to the next uh, slide, um, as you will see, it's super easy nowadays to make our own activities with songs. The ones who are like me, who have been teachers for a very long time, in my case, 30 years, I don't know if you remember back in the good old days or the bad old days where we had to listen to a song and transcribe the lyrics ourselves. Well, now, internet solves everything. Mr. Google, you know, the, the wise Google, find, you find the, the lyrics of a song super easy. You simply, you know, type the name of a song and you'll find lots of websites where you can super easily yeah, me says Pamela. Yes, I remember listening with a cassette, rewinding, trying to, you know, understand that odd word you couldn't understand. Well, nowadays we have, we don't have that problem. In 10 minutes, you make your own song activity. So if we move on to the next slide, you will see a couple of activities that are uh, very simple for you to make. You simply copy the lyrics on a Word document and you work on it. In 10 minutes, you make your own song. You can do things like, for example, in the previous slide, Grace, you can see, um, cross out extra words, you can add an extra word in each of the lines of a paragraph. They have to listen and cross out the extra one. The typical complete, which is the one everybody does. You can, if it's lower students, you can give a, a word bubble with the words they have to include just to make the activity easier for them. Or if it's an elementary level, you can choose the words uh, that are easy to spot. Make sure you listen to the song first because when you read the lyrics, you feel, well, this is easy. But then when you hear the song, sometimes that word is not so prominent. So it's a very good idea to listen before you make, listen to the song before you do the activity. Then um, put the phrases in order. That's a difficult activity. If it's elementary students, probably you can choose a small paragraph, one stanza only. And then put the verbs in brackets into the correct tense. That's a very nice activity and great for grammar practice. Again, this is a hidden drilling exercise. <laughs> if we move on to the next slide, you see some other activities. You can do matching. That is the first column is in order, like you cut, you, you break down the, the, the lines, the phrases, and the first column is in order. The second one is all you know, jumbled up. They have to match the, you know, match the broken sentences. Again, complete, choose is a very simple one. Choose is a good option for beginners. You can work on very difficult songs with an easy activity and students have a feeling, I'm doing real English. This is not graded, you know, and the feeling is so great. And then, as we said before, cross out extra words. Well, so as you can see in one song, you can have different activities. You know, you can, usually lyrics are long, so you can split the song in different types of activities. This is to, for you to, for example, work on the songs your students chose, you know, because you will have to make most certainly your own activities. If we move on to the next slide, we will see now um, different uses to which you can put songs. Um, you can choose your own songs. This is the ones you choose, not the ones your students choose, right? You can choose your own songs by grammar topic. I will show you a couple of examples now. So that's why I said be on the look or on the hearing for lyrics. Be paying it when you listen to music, pay attention. You know, there are great samples of all the grammar topics or vocabulary areas you want to work on. Also vocabulary themes or areas. You can also choose songs that tell stories. Um, in YouTube, you see great videos nowadays, and you can work on the images. That's why we, we put this into the audiovisual category, not just auditory, because you can work on the videos and the stories some songs provide. And you can also use full songs if you want, or parts of songs to suit your objectives. Like um, if you're working on a certain grammar topic, you can find a species of songs that suit your purposes to give students samples of real language. Songs also, I haven't included this here, but it's super important. Songs help you, uh, help you work on phonetics because they give students real, real um, 
authentic and native speakers of different accents pronouncing um, language in different ways. And that's a great sample of language. If we move on to the next slide, you will see now some examples. Um, first of all, I have just named a few because as I tell you, you'll find songs for whichever purpose. Like if we divide them, for example, songs for verb tenses, uh, I'll show you a couple of examples here. I mentioned in the first column, a couple of examples. If we move on to the next slide, we'll show you a sample of a song, for example. If you simply choose this song by Celine Dion, whose pronunciation is sublime, um, you'll see that in just one song, this is half of the song, it's a very long song, it has 35 verbs in the sample past. So you'll hear Celine pronouncing beautifully the ED, um, regular verse, which is something that usually brings about so many problems for students. They never know how to pronounce the ED. A good idea with this kind of activity is, mind you, have your students complete the blanks before listening. So again, it's a, it's a grammar exercise in disguise, you know, so you have them. How else would you convince students to, to complete 35 verbs? <laughs> So, you know, they fill in the blanks in a few minutes. They can even work in pairs. And then you listen to the song to check. You can have them sing in the song because, again, it's a great way to improve their pronunciation and to copy, to imitate. If we move on to the next activity, you'll see an example of a song with present continuous. Um, Lemon Tree by Fool's Garden. This song is super sticky. Every time you teach it with your songs, you end up, you end up singing it all week long, and, you, and so will your students. And uh, there are even beautiful uh, YouTube versions with cartoons. Uh, go and have a look and find out. You'll see lots of versions, beautiful versions, especially not just to work with adults, but also with children. This is a great song to work with children when you teach present continuous. Let's move on to another example. Uh, well, this is more modern, you know, because, you know, students don't like those oldies. <laughs> Those, for, for those, those two were from the 90s. This is a current one by Bruno Mars, all the rage nowadays. This is a beautiful song that works on simple present. Again, you have lots of verbs uh, for them to complete with third person, so they have to put the yes. The video is super beautiful, so you can also play the video. And let's move on to the next slide. So I show you some other grammar structures that you can find in songs. This is I remind you songs that you choose because you want to practice a certain uh, grammar area. There are examples, for example, as you will see here, uh, lots of songs that tackle with conditionals, different types of conditionals. Here to mention a few tears in heaven, and they teach you not just the grammar and the repetitive kind of, you know, uh, grammar drill, but also the use of a certain topic. That is, if you look at the lyrics of Tears in Heaven, and you tell students the story of this song, um, yeah, Dua Lipa, yes, she says, I don't know, I had no idea you were talking about, Dua Lipa is great, I tell you, Natalia, you should work on, I mean, she has beautiful songs, and she has a beautiful voice, and you learn from those singers, from your students, that's true. Going back to this, Tears in Heaven, if you tell students the story of this song, um, Eric Clapton wrote it when his son died, his very young son died, and he imagines the situation, what would happen if he went to heaven, you know? And it's all an imaginary situation about what would happen? Would you know my name if I saw you in heaven? Would you hold my hand? So it's a very clear explanation of what second type conditionals are all about, not just the structure, but the use. Um, the same happens with that, that, that I would be good. It's great to imagine, to make students imagine in what context the singer wrote this song, why that I would be good when, you know. So it's great to work on the theme and on the story behind a song for students to clearly grasp the use of a certain grammar topic. So if we move on to the next slide. Also, if you see here, as long as you love me, I didn't include it, but it's full, full of indirect questions. I don't know who you are, where you're from, what you, as long as you love me. Well. So you'll see uh, lots of indirect questions to work on. Then you can use songs and choose songs because of the vocabulary they bring about. Like for example, if we move on to the next slide, great. I'll show you an example of a song which is full of adjectives, a song by Alanis Morissette, um, Can In My Pocket. 
full, full, full of adjectives. You can use this song also if you're working with upper intermediate students working on word formation. After doing the song, you can work on the negative uh, prefixes of some of the adjectives to do as a follow-up activity. Also pair them up um, you know, with adjectives and their opposites. It's another good follow-up with this song. There's another example of a song you can use for vocabulary, also for upper intermediate and advanced students when you work on word formation. You can simply choose, like in this case, Simply Resistible by Robert Palmer, you'll see it's full of words that you can extract to work on word formation. So you simply, you know, it deletes the word and put another word in the family on the right and students have to listen to the song and find the word in the word family that fits in that blank. So you can use, you can make your own songs. Lots of songs work with a super difficult uh, topic for students, which is phrasal verbs. These are just two, but I tell you, I have like 15 songs full of phrasals. So if you're on the look, you'll find lots of examples. Within the same song, you'll find at least five, six, seven phrases. And these also show students the frequency of occurrence of certain words. Phrasals are super common in informal language. Songs usually work, are samples of informal language. So you also teach them the register of certain areas of vocabulary and you teach phrasals in context. That's the most difficult thing about phrasal. They understand the meaning, but they don't, then they don't know how to use it. So songs are a great, great way to work on, to give students samples of phrasal verbs and to show them how frequent they are. You can also choose songs by theme. I haven't included uh, samples of these, but just to mention a few examples, if you go back then when we finish the webinar and you check the lyrics of these songs, you'll see that, for example, songs like Beautiful by Christina Aguilera will um, provide a great example of a song uh, to work on stereotypes, discrimination. The video is quite shocking, not for children, for teenagers and adults. Uh, you work on the images of that video. If, if any of the lessons you're working on top, top, you know, taps on this topic of discrimination and stereotypes. Also, The Living Years by Mike and the Mechanics talks about the clash between generations or world by Fight for Fighting, talks about environmental issues, contamination, pollution, and the world we would want. War, No More Trouble by Bob Marley a beautiful song that tackled, that tackled uh, racial discrimination. Where is, the, Where is the Love by the Black Eyed Peas talks about the same topic. So you can choose songs connected to the topic. Usually many songs bring about controversial issues that you can use to talk about. Um, you can also use songs that tell stories. And in that, um, um, here I would like to point out that it's a very good idea to show the video clip of a song. We're going to show you one set of activities based on um, a very, a very uh, funny song I, I once came across many years ago. Let me tell you the story behind the song and why we chose it, because it really shows you a very clear example of authentic materials. This song was written uh, about 10 years ago by a Canadian singer called Dave Carroll. After a difficult situation he had, um, he was traveling with his band to give a series of tours um, in the United States. And in one of his connecting flights, he saw <laughs> through the window uh, one of the cargo men, you know, um, who were, you know, moving the, the luggage from one plane to the other. They saw, he saw his Taylor guitar, by the way, a Taylor guitar is about $1,500, very expensive guitar flying from one uh, cargo man to another one, and it broke down. Uh, his guitar was precious to him, imagine for a singer. So he started a series of complaints with United Airlines that ended up nowhere. After a year, he says it's a, a year long saga, fighting against United because he wanted a refund, he, he got nowhere. So he said, well, okay, I'm a musician. This was the beginning of the boom of the social networks and YouTube. And he uh, wrote a song in, in a very funny way. It's a very ironic and comical song, a comedy. And he uh, posted it in YouTube. It was an instant hit with millions, millions of hits in a day. It became a case study, as you can see here. This is the cover of a book that was written 
on you know the power on the voice of social media when social media was just starting he appeared in lots of tv shows in the newspapers it was a real hit and on top of this he became more famous as a musician <laughs> finally united airlines refunded him and he got what he wanted so let us work on some activities you can use actually by the way let me tell you a story i wrote to this guy <laughs> when i first heard about this i said i found his email somewhere i wrote to him he answered i, I couldn't believe it <laughs> i told him listen i'm a teacher from argentina i am using your song to teach past perfect to teach letters of complaint and he was like oh great when do you want me to come to argentina <laughs> okay so let, let's see uh we're not going to see the whole video. I recommend watching it at home, full video. It's great. Actually, there's a saga of three videos, one, two, and three. Uh, we're going to watch just a minute of this one for you to enjoy. I flew United Airlines on my way to Nebraska. The plane departed Halifax, connecting in Chicago's old hair. While on the ground, a passenger said from the seat behind me, My God, they're throwing guitars out there. The band and I exchanged a look, best described as terror, at the action on the tarmac. Knowing whose projectiles these would be So before I left Chicago I alerted three employees Who showed complete indifference towards me United, United You broke my Taylor guitar United Should have flown with someone else or gone by car. Cause United breaks guitars. When we landed in Nebraska, I confirmed what I suspected. Mike Taylor had been the victim of a vicious act of malice at all. Began a year. Okay, well, here you see just that. Well, the story goes on telling, you know, he tells all his odyssey in the video in a very, very funny way. So let me tell you a couple of ideas you can do. First thing, I would introduce a story to students because this is a true story that happened in real life and which became, you know, a hit in the news. So you will find here, I give you some links you'll, you'll find after the webinar. Um, you can watch a TV interview with T Dave Carroll, very clear as authentic material goes. Uh, the interview is quite clear. Um, he has a nice accent, which is easy to understand. You can also read a newspaper article about the story because it hit the, the headlines, you know, it's very important. Uh, so, you know, sort of create the atmosphere and tell students about the story. Then you watch the video. If you go to the next slide, um, Course, you'll watch the video of the song and if you want you can work on the lyrics of the song you'll find the lyrics as well in you in uh, google uh, with some activities for listening then the idea here and the, the idea we're proposing is to work on follow-up activities because this is a nice activity to work on the story you can choose to work on the story for example from the point of view of narrative tenses i did this activity for example with an intermediate group, uh, they were learning narrative tensity, specifically past perfect. So what you can do is the following. You can um, work on the lyrics, putting them, just, you know, jumbling them up, like you can see here in this activity, students have to listen to the song, put them in order. The song narrates the story chronologically, so it's great to work on narrative tenses. Once you have established the chronology of the facts of the events with this prior activity, you move on to, on the next slide, um, to an oral activity. 
Students work in small groups or in pairs, and they have to retell Dave Carroll's Odyssey in their own words, making sure they use the narrative tenses, simple past, past perfect, and past tense. Once again, this is a great sample of language to teach the past perfect, which is so difficult to use because you have to tell students, okay, you have to make sure you use the past perfect. I don't want you to just narrate chronologically using just simple past. I want you to use the three narrative tenses. So students have to prepare the retelling beforehand in groups, working in groups, and then they share with the whole class. You can also use this activity, and I have done it with advanced students, to work on a writing, which is always a bore, a crushing bore to work on, which is letters of complaint. This song presents to you a real situation where someone had a problem and complained, and in the song you will find lots of samples of phrases you can use in letters of complaint, because ironically, he uses in the lyrics certain phrases which are quite formal, because they are phrases probably he used when he wrote letters and emails and everything. So working with the lyrics, you can uh, work in groups again, writing a letter of complaint to United Airlines, and after they have finished, you exchange letters and you see different samples among the students. All right, so uh, this is a chain of activities you can do with just one song. So here you see how rich they are. Well, so now Grace will move on and pass it on to you now. Grace will add some other types of audio visual materials and also present some examples of electronic materials. So goes to you, Grace. Thank you, Nilia. So, um... We will be working now on a set of integrated activities to work on some other audio audiovisual uh, authentic materials like documentaries and uh, movie clips. And also some electronic authentic materials like animations. Mm -hmm. So let me share with you uh, a set of activities that um, we prepared for one of our courses at Icana that deals with, uh, with a topic. The topic is cybersecurity, something that is very um, fashionable uh, these days. We're all worried about cybersecurity. So the unit contains uh, three authentic materials, three pieces of authentic materials. One is, <clears throat> a documentary from Share America. And students uh, work on uh, two activities after watching uh, the documentary. One is very simple one. They have to decide who uh, says what. And in the second activity, they have to mark the words that they don't hear in the video. The second, uh, a piece of authentic material is uh, uh, an animation from the Federal Trade Commission. It's an animation uh, to provide security tips when using public Wi-Fi networks. In this case, we used uh, a true-false activity, a more general activity, and then we went into details uh, by having an activity where the students had to choose uh, between two or three options. And finally, the most uh, motivating, probably, and demanding activity is the movie trailer uh, from the movie Firewall. And in this, uh, the activity is uh, quite simple. They have to choose uh, the correct option, and there are always two options uh, for each uh, question. So, um, and this is a material taken from uh, Warner Brothers YouTube channel. So, are you ready to have a taste of it? We have to go very quickly into it because I'm afraid we are running short of time, but I hope you have, um, you're still willing to, <laughs> to have one more activity. So, uh, you can scan uh, the QR code and uh, Andrea will also share uh, the link in the chat. Okay, so um, 
we would like you to uh, just to browse uh, the, th the three uh, um, types of materials and then uh, go directly to firewall movie trailer. As you see, we have first the animation, then the fire uh, movie trailer, and finally the documentary, okay? But please go to the firewall movie trailer. You can watch the trailer and do the activity, which is a short one. And then you can do the rest of the activities when we finish the webinar, because you can keep, of course, the link. Bank. I spent 20 years protecting this bank. With security that's virtually unbreakable. You think you can hack into these servers? You design the software. You find me a way in. Find me a way in. They will take him hostage. If you don't do what I ask, I will kill you and your children. They will take his identity. We see what you see. Any call that you make, we can monitor. You're going to transfer the accounts of your 10,000 richest customers. But he... Change of plans. God! Jack has decided not to cooperate. We'll take them down. You don't get a dime. Harrison Ford. You're all gonna get caught. Paul Bettany. What about the money? You just lost 20 million. Your family are dead. You hear me? They are dead! Firewall. So as you see, the activity <clears throat> is quite simple. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> I hope you like the activity. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for this thumbs up. Okay, and then we had planned, I know it's almost time, but uh, we'll have five minutes to reflect a little bit on the three questions uh, on the slide. Uh, I think it's important. And Andrea will be sharing um, a Jamboard activity, which is a collaborative board where you can all uh, type in your, your ideas, your answers to these three questions. Uh, since we don't have much time, maybe we were planning to go into breakout rooms, but instead of that, you can all enter the Jamboard and, and choose one of the questions and write an answer, okay? So uh, in the Jamboard activity, there are three pages. What, you can browse the pages hmm, using the arrows on top of the slides, okay? And the first slide is why should, uh, why should we use authentic materials in our classes? The second one is, uh, can we use authentic materials with elementary students? And the third one is name one advantage and one disadvantage. So choose the question that you like best and please uh, type in an answer, a message for the rest of this community. Thank you.
We'll take one more minute. <coughs> Beautiful. So we see that uh, you can all read the, uh, the ideas, mm -hmm. but uh, why uh, should we use authentic materials? For motivation, to provide students with real language, to engage students, uh, for the feeling of real English, uh, real in English, real life, okay? There is a coincidence here. Then let's go to uh, slide two. Can we use authentic materials with elementary students? Yes, we can. You need to grade them, good. We can use them with songs, <coughs> brochures, excuse me, or we can, and they are really useful. We can use songs, videos. Yes, we can. Very positive attitude. Sure, here, very big one. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> great, of course. And let's see if someone uh, decided to write. Okay, good. So about advantages and disadvantages, maybe length, uh, advantage, real language. Things are more real uh, for students if they, are, uh, if they get involved, uh, they are updated. Okay. Uh, so maybe the, the disadvantage is that it takes too much preparation time. Agree, yes, but maybe uh, uh, an activity uh, once in a while, okay? And besides, maybe you can choose one song or one of piece of authentic material, uh, a movie trailer, and develop activities for different levels. So you can use the same material uh for different courses That's also a, may a, a i add good... something great yes for example, sure, sure i'm a super fan of songs super, i have always been we noticed I have, <laughs> I have collected songs forever imagine how many songs i have in 30 years of teaching like this the juro i know <laughs> so you know. you collect them and once you have made them you have one and another and you use them over and over so you have a collection of things ready for you to use because you repeat topics right. after years of course so. yes exactly so, so thank you for that, Nelia. All right. <coughs> so let's have a final look at this. It takes time first, but then it saves time in the future. Right, sure. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because you can always recycle. Of course. Okay. Because anything material is never outdated. It's exactly. Always... Never, never. And besides, for those of you who love songs, there are great, sorry, not songs, a series, TV series. You know that there are a great um, series from the 60s, 70s, and 80s that had uh, introductory themes with narrators speaking. And those are really great, great materials to work with. So let's go back to our presentation. And just to, to end, and well, I don't know if you have any questions. We would love to hear from you. Uh, you can type them in the chat. There was one, there was one <laughs> question a couple of minutes ago, Grace. Okay. Like to, yeah, someone okay. asked if we yeah. make these activities with Moodle. I think they were referring to the activities you presented on electronic. And okay. Uh, uh, of course, we, we, at Ikana, we have a campus, a Moodle campus. And uh, there's a plugin uh, installed that's called H5P, and uh, you can generate it there. But also for those of you who don't have access to a campus with this plugin, you can go to h5p.org and use uh, the, the, the apps, the different types of activities, that uh, interactive activities that are provided there free of charge. Good. So, hey, Adriana just said that she would like to learn to make Juego de la Oca, okay? <laughs> hey, Adri, I can give you a hand. I created <laughs> several, uh, one okay. on Genially, another on uh, Flippity. Yes, so I can, I can help you. I have two or yeah, three Genially is to great. share. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. So right. I can, I can, we can, mm -hmm. yeah, arrange, yeah. Uh, those for uh, games, yeah. Yeah, for right. games. For games. Any questions?
No? Okay, so thank you very much, everyone, for being here. Uh, thank you, Andrea and Nilia, for uh, presenting you. here today with me for all the time you devoted uh, to the preparation of this webinar. And thank you, everybody, for all your support and for participating so actively in all, in all these uh, activities and in the webinar. And well, we hope to see you uh, in 2022 for the next edition of ICANA webinar series for English language teachers. May you all have a happy holiday season. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you very much.